Joining me as ever this season, it's Dutch Olympic and archer, now. Chef Vandenberg. Interesting lineup in the final four in the women's, Chef. Yeah, a couple new faces and a couple uh, uh, known faces that have a point to prove after the first stage in Antalya. No waiting around here. It's time to introduce the semi-finalists for the first compound women's individual. On target number one, representing India. Of the eighth core. On target number two, representing Great Britain, Ella Gibson. The line judge for this matchup is Angelina Chen. So there we have it, uh, Avni Kaur of India is just 18 years old, world number 64. She has got a stage team bronze medal from last year, but this is her first shot at an individual podium. Goes up against uh, the star from last year, world number one, 22 year old Ella Gibson from Great Britain. She attended three stages last season, won all of them. This is her second stage this season and her first medal yet to be gained in a word Gibson the favorite uh, I would say so yes but uh, um, I'm always up for a tight match with uh, um, up and cover well, good start from the up-and-comer, as you put it. Uh, uh, the sighter straight into the 10. Nine. No. <coughs> Ella needs a bit more time to uh, set her sights, but I also noticed that she's shooting a different bow than she did in, uh, in Turkey. So she might have done a bit of a tactical change in between. Nine. No. So just three arrows per end, and of course the score accumulates as we go through the five ends. High quality start from the pair of them. Let's just start with uh, Avni Kaur. Her first uh, shot at an individual medal at the High Under Archery World Cup stage. Yeah, uh, d on the one hand, um, that's a difficult position to be in because obviously she's uh, not as experienced as, uh, as Ella is. On the other hand, um, she can pretty much only win this match. Uh, if she loses this match, she is lost against Ella Gibson, um, which happens <laughs> to the best of them. Um, and if she wins this match, she is pretty much just beaten the higher ranked archer. So she's in a good position to uh, yeah, show something cool here. And conversely, the pressure is really on uh, Ella Gibson, as you were sort of alluding to, having uh, not taken a medal so far this season. Was in the final four in Antalya. Yeah, and well, you say not having taken a medal, what you mean on the World Cup circuit, I suppose, uh, since uh, she did win the European Grand Prix earlier in the this season. That's very true. So uh, I, I think she has gotten the taste of winning already. Um, she just needs to do it on the world stage, and uh, I'm sure that she knows uh, as well as we do that she can get the gold here if she shoots well. Well, all square off to the first end, and Chef has mentioned already. Gibson shooting with a different bow. Perhaps when we get a close-up of that, Chef will be able to tell us what is different about the bow. But it's going to be Avni Kaur from India to shoot first at the start of the second end. Nine. 
nine. You know? So you can see here that she's shooting a different model bow than uh, she was shooting in Turkey. It's the same brand and pretty much the same nine. setup as she, she was shooting, but um, just a different model probably has a, a slightly different characteristic of, uh, of shooting than uh, the one that she was shooting, but um, yeah, she must have experimented in between and uh, must have been unhappy with her nine. fourth place result in, uh, in Turkey. Yeah. Is it unusual for an archer to switch bows? Sort of not even mid-season. We've only really had one one of the the stages so far in the Highland Archer World Cup series. It's not super unusual, and and from what I've heard, um, Ella is very um, analytic about it. She she is able to see it uh, objectively and and not put too many emotion or feeling into her decision making. Um, so yeah, that would be a good basis to change uh, a setup or something about your setup chance for her to sneak into the lead here just oh, clipping the line uh, looks of things for a 58 we will of course have to wait for the judge to confirm that in fact the scorecard suggests that it's definitely going for a measure did you get a feel for that one uh, it was really quick I only got uh, like a fraction of a second to see it but Difficult to say from. So there's lots up for, for grabs here, and uh, the, the winners uh, of the individual tournaments book themselves a place at the Hyundai Archery World Cup final in Hermosillo, Mexico, a little bit later on this year. So it takes the pressure off a little bit. They've got to get through this match and the final. So it makes sense that I couldn't see it in a fraction of a second because the judge had to grab his uh, magnifying glasses as well to see it up close. Well, a curious look on, on her face for the last arrow. The, the first two arrows, are both the first ends from Gibson, have gone high right, and then she's corrected for the second two, but that third arrow, that last end, drifted back up to the right as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm not the best at lip reading, but I think she was saying that one felt good um, when she turned around to her coach. Uh, so I suppose that she's just going to move her sight uh, based off of that last arrow. Well, Gibson has snuck into the lead by a single point. So now Avni Kaur shoots first because she is trailing. Ooh, that was very close oh. to the buzzer. I wonder, if I didn't see if the coach was uh, actually counting her down, but she... Uh, shot her shot on time so it's interesting to note about uh, Avneet Kaur is that she has quite a lot of face contact with her string which in recurve archery is not that big of a deal but in compound archery because you have let off and therefore only let's say 20 to 30 percent of your draw weight left oh. when you're in full draw um, you might deform the string and therefore you know give the arrow a bit of uh, um, yeah, it, it make it not fly as, as well. Yeah, give it a bit of a nudge, yeah. yeah. Um, so typically you'll see compound archers only lightly touching their string with their face. But here you can see that she really has like a solid point of anchor. And in fairness, if it's consistent, it doesn't really matter how much face uh, contact you have. It's just very difficult to have uh, consistent uh, amounts of pressure on your face if you uh, press the string into it. Well, seems like she was warming up into that one, Gibson. 
extending the lead by another two points here and getting her first perfect. And she just looks back to what we saw last season. Yeah, this uh, the, the the last end that we uh, just saw from Ella um, reminds me of what we saw last season. Just a, a confident, uh, yeah, confident bit of shooting in a small group of arrows. Um, and uh, yeah, just a, a relaxed kind of vibe when she walks back to the coaching box. So. Yeah, she's found the sweet spot again, hasn't she, that she found last season, taking three stage wins on the High Archery World Cup circuit. Getting undone a little bit in the uh, finale in Tlaxcala last year against uh, Sara Lopez. Yeah, it wasn't necessarily a bad final. Uh, Great to make the final, <laughs> yeah. but she, she after the season she had, I think a lot of people were expecting her to take the gold medal. Lots of uh, Brits there. Spot a recurve or two. Coming on to cheer Ella Gibson on. Pretty sure that was Penny Healy, wasn't it, on the left with the yeah. noticeable purple hair? Yeah. And a, a stray Danish archer in between. So Gibson leading by three with two ends to go. Interestingly, so far, all of her arrows that she missed or that she didn't shoot into the 10 all went high, um, which is, I think, something else than what we've been seeing in, in Turkey, uh, for instance. But then again, uh, Kors arrows are either in the middle or high. So who knows, maybe it has to do something with the uh, the wind blowing over the tent that they're shooting next to. That one's called a nine by the announcer, but I think they're going to have a closer look at that. Yeah, it's been marked for a measure. But things looking a little rosier for Avnik Kao here. And she follows up Gibson's perfect with a perfect of her own. And could be trailing just by a single point. Yeah. Having been three behind, provisionally that is the case. Gibson still leads, but that second arrow from Gibson could get marked up to a 10. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, but it's worth a look at least. It's definitely worth a look, especially if you're on the Gibson side of the shooting line. Well, it has been marked up by the looks of things, so it will be a 117 for Gibson. Didn't need the magnifying glass that time. No, it seemed clear enough for him, but I'm still curious what his... Uh, with his uh, result is. And let's return the favor now to uh, Team India's one and only. Make some noise for Avnit Kaur. Well, you can see when you s when you look at the target and the holes, you can see what uh, Chef was referring to earlier. See the tens are all high and right. Yeah, so the yeah the tens are typically in the middle, and then the nines. They, they just stray off mostly high and, and also to the right, um, but on both sides of the range, so on target one and on target two. And it certainly looks like there's a, the wind is affecting the back end of the range more than it is the shooting line, so we don't see too much, a uh, little bit of uh, headwind. Yeah, and they're sheltered by the, uh, the tents that, are, uh, that they're shooting in between. So it might be that the wind is blowing over the tent and then uh, like falling onto them. And that will give you some um, vertical movement to your groups. But you can see that there's a little bit of a wobble in the, in the bow, but it's not, not that much. So it, it's, it's not blowing around that much. Kani 
needs to drive this into the 10 and hope for a mistake from Gibson. Nine. Another longish hold and buzzer going off just a couple of seconds after the arrow hit the target. She's in a really good position here. Um, uh, whatever car does here, uh, Ella will have enough with an eight. Ten. Nice finish, setting a target of 144. As master mathematician Chef Annabur says, an eight for a place in the gold medal match. So what's required from Gibson. Nine. Pops it into the nine to finish with a 146, uh, which is a, a relatively comfortable win in terms of the scoreline, but definitely a comfortable win in terms of the attitude and the execution from Ella Gibson. Yeah, she seemed to just um, try to find her pace and her rhythm here, um, and uh, yeah, enjoying her shooting rather than trying to win or trying to prove something. So it, it's a, a bit of a different vibe than uh, what we saw uh, just last month in uh, Turkey.